So uh, instead, we're going to hear about succinct non-interactive arguments in relativized worlds. And this is Megan Chen presenting on behalf of her, Alessandra Chiesa, and Nicholas Spooner. And then I guess we'll try to get the video working for the, the second talk. Hello. Okay, thanks. Can I go? All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Megan, and I'm from Boston University. And today I will tell you about snarks and relativized worlds. This is joint work with Alessandro Chiesa and Nicholas Spooner. So the setting for a project is the following. Suppose we have a streaming computation and we want to verify its correctness in a streaming fashion. So given a function f, an initial computation state z0 and a final computation state zt, we want to check that zt is the correct output of iteratively applying f t times to z0. Since this is an NP computation, the verification statement is there exists intermediate states ZI, um, they're the blue ones, and witnesses associated with each step, the blue WI, such that at each time step, F applied to the state ZI and witnesses WI um, outputs a correct new state ZI plus one. So one way to check the computation is to use a monolithic proof. We run a proof that takes as input the function f, z0, um, and zt, as well as all the witnesses, all the zis and wis, um, for the entire computation. However, one entity, the prover, has to remember all the intermediate states um, and also the witnesses. This requires the prover to have, t uh, to have memory linear in t. Further, given a proof for a t-step computation, um, proving t plus one steps requires recomputing the entire proof. A better method is to verify the computation incrementally or in a streaming fashion. Now we run a prover to prove the computation at every time step. Um, also, the prover checks that the proof produced in the previous step um, is valid. This approach is called incrementally verifiable computation or IVC and it was uh, invented in, by Valiant in 2008. Further, a generalization of IVC um, is a primitive called proof carrying data or PCD. For this, um, we generalize a path graph computation into a di directed acyclic graph computation. For this talk, we'll focus on the IVC setting, but everything generalizes to PCD. Uh, finally, IVC has many applications. One is for proving long everlasting computations, such as succinct blockchains and verifiable delay functions. Another is when multiple provers work together to create a proof, such as for zero knowledge cluster computing and verifiable image editing. So let's define IVC. On the top left, we have an IVC prover who takes as input a previous state Z a proof pi and a witness w as inputs. With these inputs, the prover outputs a new state z prime and a new proof pi prime. Then this new state and proof pair becomes the inputs into the next prover. Um, this is shown by the green arrows in the picture. Further, this can run many, many times. On the top right, we have the IBC verifier. At any time step, the verifier takes a current state z a current proof pi, and outputs one if the entire computation so far is correct. For efficiency, we want that the proof size stays constant. We don't want the proofs to grow with the number of times we'd run the prover. Otherwise, the prover's input size and hence runtime will grow at each time step. Um, IVC satisfies the standard completeness and proof of knowledge properties 
but they aren't that important for this talk, so I won't uh, define them. This leads us to the question, how do we instantiate IVC? The main way to instantiate IVC is using SNARKs. To see how this works, we'll zoom into what the IVC prover is doing. So the IVC prover runs the SNARK prover for a computation R, which I have as the gray box in the diagram. It's defined as follows. At every time step I, there is a witness WI such that the function f is uh, computed correctly, and the snark verifier accepts the old state and proof pair zi uh, pi i. Notice that the snark prover proves that the snark verifier accepts. Also here, the IVC proof is the snark proof. So let's go back to our question. How do we instantiate IVC? In particular, SNARKs have their own constructions and possibility results, and we should take a look at those. So there are two main approaches for building SNARKs for NP. The first is using SNARKs in the common reference string or CRS model. These require knowledge assumptions, and I won't discuss these further in this talk. The second approach is to use SNARKs in the random oracle model. This means that both the SNARK prover and the verifier have access to a random oracle. In the picture, this is the yellow box with row in it. Here we write the SNARK's security proof in the random oracle model, but when we use the SNARK in the real world, we have to instantiate the random oracle with a hash function that we believe is secure enough. In this paper, we focus on SNARKs in the random oracle model because we get properties such as transparent or universal setup. We also get efficiency improvements from avoiding expensive algebra. However, when constructing IVC, SNARKs in the random oracle model have the following issue. Both the prover and the verifier access the oracle, but the SNARK is built for, built, uh, built for uh, verifying cor the correctness of non-oracle computations. This is a problem because the prover needs to prove that the verifier accepts, but the verifier makes oracle queries, and it's unclear how to, how to do this. So in prior work by Chiesa, Oja, and Spooner, they get around this issue by heuristically instantiating the random oracle. Um, so they use a concrete hash function such as SHA2, and in the picture I have this as the red boxes. In other words, any time the verifier makes a random oracle call, it actually just runs the SHA2 circuit. So there are theoretical and practical implications of doing this. First, let's talk theoretical issues. We're intentionally breaking the random oracle abstraction by instantiating the oracle. This means you don't actually get end-to-end -end security in any particular model. The SNARK is proven in the random oracle model, and the incrementally verifiable computation is in the standard uh, model, where the hash function uh, replaces the random oracle. Second, there may be hidden uh, security flaws when we apply the heuristic step. This is true anytime we heuristically instantiate the random oracle. There are practical concerns as well. First, we lose flexibility in the ways that we can instantiate the random oracle. Here, the SHA-2 circuit becomes part of the verifier's code, so we have to use a circuit implementation. This rules out other implementations, such as multi-party computation or using a hardware token. Another concern is the efficiency of the SNARK. Specifically, SNARKs proving hash function circuits are really expensive. Recently, there are proposals for new um, hash functions that are more SNARK friendly, but the community is still doing cryptanalysis on them. Given these disadvantages of heuristically instantiating the random oracle when constructing IVC, my co-authors and I asked the following question. Is there an oracle model capital O, such that there are SNARKs in, the or in this Oracle model, and the SNARK can prove statements about the Oracle. In particular, having an Oracle model satisfying these two conditions means we can build IVC. We can have a SNARK prover that proves, it, proves uh, the correctness of uh, its own verifier. So as a case study, what if the Oracle were the random Oracle? 
Does there, snarks, does there exist snarks that prove statements about random Oracle queries? The answer is no. The issue is that every random Oracle query needs to be checked individually. So the verifier's runtime could be as long as the comp computation's runtime. So we won't have efficient verification. What we're looking for is an Oracle model in which we can batch many queries to be verified together. So now to our results. Our paper defines an Oracle model called the Low Degree Random Oracle Model, or LDRO. I may also call it the Low Degree Oracle. This Oracle model allows us to batch the verification of Oracle queries and allows us to build snarks about Oracle computations. So we build a snark that proves computations um, in the low degree random Oracle model. And the snark also has access to the low degree Oracle. This is exactly for constructing IVC, which has the prover proving statements about its own verifier. So we construct the snark using two components. First, we have a, uh, the, sorry, the first component checks the correctness of the non-Oracle computation. Then the second component verifies the Oracle queries. So for the, checking the correctness of non-Oracle computations, we build a snark in the low degree random Oracle model. For verifying Oracle queries, we construct a non-interactive query reduction scheme that lets us batch Oracle queries in each step of the computation. And we can delay the verification of all the queries to a later time. This construction builds upon an interactive query reduction technique by Kalai and Ross from 2008. For the rest of the talk, I'll discuss the following. I'll define and discuss the low degree random Oracle. Second, I'll explain the ideas used for building our non-interactive query reduction scheme. As part of this, I'll review how Kalai and Ross's interactive method works and explain how we make it non-interactive. So as a stepping stone to defining the low degree random Oracle, let's start with the random Oracle. For this talk, I'll define the random Oracle to be some function from bit strings of M length to elements of some finite field F. As a visual example, I, threw th I drew a 3D Boolean cube, which re represents random Oracle queries when M equals three. When you query any point in the random Oracle, for example, 001, you get a random element Y in the field. And now I'll explain the low degree random Oracle. The low degree random Oracle is a low degree low degree extension of the random oracle to a finite field F. That is, the LDRO, notated as the row hat in blue, is M variate. It has individual degree at most D and is evaluated over F to the M. Further, the low degree oracle satisfies the following properties. First, points in the Boolean hypercube agrees with the random oracle. Second, um, our oracle is low degree. For example, the degree D is some constant. Third, algorithms with access to the low degree oracle can query any point in F to the M, not just points in the Boolean hypercube. So what other properties do we want of the low degree oracle? As a comparison, the standard random oracle has two nice properties when we do security analyses. It, it's simulatable, i.e. we can lazily sample the Oracle's evaluation table, and it's possible to program it. A natural question is whether our Oracle also satisfies these properties. For this talk, I'll discuss how simulation works. Um, and, oh, I forgot to say, our Oracle satisfies both. And um, I'll discuss how simulation works and programmability uses many of the same ideas. So there is perfect stateful simulation of low, low degree random oracles. And the procedure works as follows. Given a query X, we want to check if Y, the output of the oracle at X, is already determined. So why might Y be already determined? Well, suppose that we lazily sample the low degree oracles evaluation table. The evaluation table should also faithfully represent points on a low degree polynomial. Hence, given a set of query answer pairs, the value of Y might already be determined just because of the structure of the Oracle. 
Luckily, there's a non-trivial polynomial time algorithm that checks if Y is determined, given previously seen Oracle queries. This algorithm is called succinct constraint detection and is by Ben Sasson et al. from 2017. Then using this algorithm, we can check, you know, if Y is determined, we'll use Y as the query answer for X. If not, then we can uniformly sample the value of Y from the field. So another question is, can we heuristically instantiate this Oracle? Since the low degree Oracle um, has, stateful, uh, has stateful simulation, we can use a trusted party or an MPC protocol to uh, instantiate it. Another idea is the following. Benabas, Gennaro, and Valis defined a pseudo-random function f such that it's possible to evaluate the polynomial p written on the slide efficiently. To heuristically instantiate the low degree oracle, we can obfuscate this polynomial p. Note that if f's outputs are indeed pseudorandom, then p will be a pseudorandom polynomial, just because it's defined by its pseudorandom coefficients. Finally, our last idea is to start with an existing strong hash function, such as SHA2, then arithmetize it. Note that we can always compute a minimum degree extension of a hash function, but the resulting polynomial will have really high degree. So we'll consider the question of how to actually accomplish this uh, instantiation in future work. So, now I will show our non-interactive query reduction protocol for efficiently verifying low degree random oracle queries. Remember, answering this question means we can build a snark for verifying low degree random oracle computations. So step one, uh, we'll, as, <laughs> for our first step, we'll recall Kalai and Raz's interactive query reduction protocol. Step two um, is to adjust Kalai and Raz's protocol to be snark friendly. So first, what's query reduction? The goal is to verify n queries to a polynomial, uh, to, to one query, or sorry. The goal is to verify n queries to a polynomial, and one way to do this is to verify the, or, sorry, to query the oracle at n points. But we want to do better and only do it in a constant number of queries. Kalai and Raz give an interactive proof that checks n points using only one point. Okay, so let's see how this protocol works. The prover and verifiers start by agreeing to some global set of distinct elements, B1 to Bn. These can be chosen in advance and be defined as Bi equals I. So B1 equals one, B2 equals two, Bn equals N. Both the prover and verifier know the Bi's so they can generate a minimum degree polynomial G such that G of Bi equals Xi. Here, the XIs are the Xs from the queries that we're checking. Next, the prover generates a polynomial F, which is defined as the low degree oracle rho hat composed with the polynomial G. The prover sends F to the verifier. Note that F is univariate and has degree N, the number of queries that we're checking, times M, the arity of the low degree oracle, times D, the maximum ind individual degree of each variable of our oracle. Now the verifier can check all inquiries without querying the oracle at all. Instead, it checks that F of BI equals YI. This works because the oracle queries XI are the outputs of the polynomial G. And F is rho hat composed with G. For soundness, the verifier checks that the prover um, constructed F correctly, that F is actually rho hat composed with G. To do this, the verifier picks a random challenge point beta and applies the function G to it. Then it queries the oracle rho hat at G of, beta, G of beta. The expected oracle response will be rho hat of G of beta. Then the verifier can check that this value is the same as the value of evaluating F at beta. The soundness of the scheme is n times m times d over the size of the field. This follows directly from the Schwartz-Zippel lemma. 
Also, the com communication complexity of the scheme is O of n times m times d, because that's the number of field elements required to define the function f. So now let's consider how to make the scheme snark friendly. One issue is that the verifier chooses a random beta after seeing the function f. We want this beta to be chosen ahead of time. In other words, we want to de-randomize the verifier and make the protocol non-interactive. So to do this, we're going to apply the fiat Tremier transform in which the oracle is the low degree oracle. For us, the prover queries low degree oracle at the point g comma f to generate the fiat Tremier point. Intuitively, this is fine because we've embedded the random oracle um, in our low degree oracle. Then we send this random point beta to the verifier. For soundness, the verifier also checks that beta is generated honestly. So it has to make another oracle query. The query will be g comma f, and the oracle should respond with beta. So far, we've maintained the ability to reduce any number of queries to only two queries. But now, the scheme is non-interactive, plus the verifier is de-randomized. However, there's one other subtle issue. The uh, query that the verifier makes scales with the number of inputs, specifically this g comma f query. Here, the polynomial specified by the queries x1 up to xn, meaning that its description size scales uh, with the number of queries we're checking. This issue also applies to f because it's just row hat composed with g. So how can we fix it? We'll compress the query g comma f by hashing it. Then beta is row hat queried at the hashed value. This means the verifier's check also changes. The verifier computes the hash value itself and queries the low degree oracle at the hash value. The compression property of hash functions ensures that the hash value is a fixed size. Security follows because hash functions are collision resistant. Note that this is the only part of our scheme that relies on a computational assumption, having a collision resistant hash function. So as a review, we've constructed a non-interactive scheme that batches the verification of low degree Oracle queries. Proving soundness of the scheme ends up being the technical bulk of the paper. Specifically, we have to show that the bad event written in blue on, a, on the slide doesn't happen. Proving this requires a new forking lemma for the low degree random Oracle. In our paper, we prove that this forking lemma is as good as the standard forking lemma for random oracles. Finally, oh. to conclude, I want to quickly overview some other results in our paper. First, we have a new proof of the Macaulay snark in the low degree random oracle model. Knowledge soundness is proved using the same forking lemma for the low degree random oracle I said before. This is because the original Macaulay straight line extraction technique doesn't work in the low degree random oracle model. Further, we show that our snark for Oracle computations, as well as our non-interactive query reduction protocols can be made zero knowledge. Further, once these two components are zero knowledge, our resulting snark in the low, deg low degree random Oracle for Oracle computations is zero knowledge. Thanks everyone, and I'm ready to take questions. Awesome. So maybe we can get the video, start setting up the video while we take a question. Could you come up to the microphone for the folks on Zoom? With a G uh, for your uh, results, like impossibility results as well as positive results. Like, do you need extraction? Uh, yes. So snarks are just have an additional proof of knowledge uh, condition in addition to sn uh, being a snark. Yeah, I mean, for your IVC application, for other applications, you do need the extraction probably, um, extraction feature, I but see. do you need it for your constructions and impossibility results as well? Like, do you need extraction crucially to make the argument go through? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Um, I was wondering if you could quickly comment on uh, 
the relationship of prover efficiency, verifier efficiency to the actual degree parameter. So what should we think of the degree parameter as being like constant polynomial, uh, right? Uh, how large should that, uh, should that be? Um, the degree par parameter can be a constant. Awesome. So thanks, Megan, for the yep. talk. Thank you. And, and it looks like we're good on the video. So let's hear from you, you about non-interactive zero knowledge proofs with fine grain security. Hello, everyone. My name is Yu Wang. I'm from USTC. Our title is non 